Good day, Mount Calvary Baptist Church, family and friends. It is good to see you on this day, and we pray that all is well. Last week was our pastor anniversary, and my wife and I just want to say thank you uh, for all the uh, cards and gifts and loves and prayer that we received uh, last week, and we truly do appreciate you. We love you, Mount Calvary, and we know that the best is yet to come. So we just want to say thank you thank for you. all that you have done and all that you continue to do. We will now have a selection by our Minister of Music, Brother Dwight Ross and Friends.
Thank you, Brother Dwight Ross and friends, for that selection. We will now hear a word from Pastor Rose. Thank you, Lady Rose. To God be the glory for great things he has done. The scripture text today will come from Exodus 24, 12 through 18, and it reads as follows. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on a mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on the Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. My topic today is following instructions. Following instructions. You know, almost anything you buy today comes with instructions. Instructions how to do it, instructions how to set up. My wife and I recently brought a TV. It's still sitting in our, our, our living room. And uh, so I decided to take the instructions out. And I started to read them, and then, you know what? I started to put it down. Because I said to myself, I had many TVs before. I know how to set them up. I know how to, you know, put them down. I know how to hang them. You know, I didn't have a problem before. Not that I remember. But then I started to think back, and I remember putting some things together without using the instructions. And many times I would have some screws left over, or something wouldn't quite be right, uh, and it, things didn't just turn out the way it should turned out. You know, and I realized there's a reason that we have instructions. But why is it that we find ourselves that we don't use them like we really should? Well, there's a few reasons, uh, and just to go over a few, well, number one, you know, we think that we know it all. Uh, we may have done it before, or we just think that we know, uh, so we don't need the instructions. But then also, we think that we know how to do it better. No matter what the instructions say, we think that we have and know a better and more efficient and effective way of doing it, so we don't use them. And then also, we think that we can save time. Why read all those instructions one by one, especially when we know it? It's going to take up too much time, so we don't use them. And you know, and we do this quite often, and, it, and, it is our, and it is, this is our thinking many times. And so, not only do we do it with, you know, material things, but we also carry this thinking into God's instructions, when God gives instructions to us. You know, we may get instruction from God, and because of those reasons and more, we don't follow them. And we can go back, you know, we can go back to it. You know, God gives instruction, and many times we think we know it all. God, I, I don't need you for that. I'm able to handle it. And we don't, you know, take his instruction. But then also, we think we know how to do it better and in a more efficient way. So, God, I don't need it because I think I can do it more efficiently. But, you know, it's not always about the more efficient way. You know, sometimes God wants us to go the harder way. And I know you don't want to hear that. But we have to follow God's instruction because he knows what's best for us. But also, again, sometimes we think we can save time. God, your time and your, your instruction is going to take too long. Uh, it's too far. I, you know, I can save time to doing it my way. But, you know, it's not always about saving time. Sometimes God wants us to go the long route. If you remember when the Israelites left Egypt, God could have took them a shorter route to Mount Sinai, but he took them the longer route. Why? Because number one, he was protecting them from other nations, but also they learned some things going the longer route. So sometimes God has a reason. Well, many times God has a reason for everything he does. And so there's a reason why he may take you the longer route. And so we have to be sure to follow the instructions. Now let's go into the story and we'll go back to that. In the early part of this chapter that we're reading, Moses told the people all the words of the Lord and all the commandments and all the judgments. And, and the people answered him with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord have said, we will do. Then Moses went up to the mountain with 70 of the elders and the scripture says that they saw God. Now possibly a vision of the Lord, but whatever exactly it was, it had a major effect on the elders. But so here now, God instructs Moses to come up to him. And so he can get the tablets of stone and the law and the commandments, which he has written. So Moses goes, but before Moses goes, Moses instructs Aaron and her. And then Moses went up and was in God's presence for 40 days and 40 nights. Now let's break that down a little bit if we may. Let's look at verse 12 and 13. It said, The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait here, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So verse part, first part of verse 3 says, Moses rose. Now, God gave Moses instruction. And guess what? 
Moses followed them. How do we know that? Because verse 13, it says Moses rose. Now, I want you to understand a few things. When God gave Moses instructions, he did not put his own human thinking into the instructions. And that's what stops many of us from doing what God instructs us to do. We put our own human thinking into it. Many times, you know, and when we put our own human thinking into it, many times what God is telling us may not make sense or it may seem too hard for us to do. And let me give you an example. Did God ever tell you one time to, to go witness to somebody, to go tell somebody your story or to go pray for them or go talk to them and, and we didn't do it? And, and the only reason why uh, we didn't do it was we, we put our own human thinking into it. We said to ourselves, oh, they don't want to hear from me or, or they, they may think I'm crazy or they don't want to have to hear what I have to say. But deep down inside, you know that you should have said something and even something hindsight revealed to you should have said something. But it was our human thinking that stopped us. You know, one of my favorite verses, and you hear me quote it all the time, is Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust the Lord with all your heart. But listen to the next part. And do not lean on your own understanding. You see, when God instructs, I can't lean on my own understanding because God does not base his instructions on my understanding. That's why I have to trust him. But also, when God gave Moses the instructions, Moses did not wait on it. Verse 13, it says, Moses rose. You see, when we wait, it shows the lack of faith because we're hesitating. And hesitating means we're not moving. And when we're not moving, it's because we are unsure. And that comes from the lack of faith. James 1 and 22 says this. It says, be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. So yes, Meaning that when you read, know, and hear the word, you must be doers of it. You must do as it says. But also, when God gives you instruction, God's given you his word. And we must be doers of his word. Doers of his instruction and not wait. We can't hesitate. Yes, this is a dark world that we live in. But look at what the scripture says in Psalms 119, 105. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Which means that everywhere you take me, God, I will be able to see because of you. The third one. When God gave Moses the instructions, Moses did not ask anyone else what they thought about it. Can I repeat that again? When God gave Moses the instructions, Moses didn't go around asking anyone else what they thought about it. If God gave the instructions, there's no need to ask anyone else what they think about it. And we find that we do that so often and get talked out of what God instructed us to do. There are many of us who are stuck or who have missed things, who, who missed doors that were open, all because we listen to somebody else rather than doing what God instructed. And we can even admit it to ourselves. There were times where we just said, man, I wish I just did what God told me to do. Yeah, you should have followed the instructions of God. So verse 13 says, Moses rose and he did not put his own th human thinking in it. He did not hesitate and he did not check with anyone else. He rose and he went. So let's look at verse 14. It says this. And he said to the elders, wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Before Moses went up, he gave instructions now to Aaron and her. Moses was their leader who was being led by God, and God showed this to them many times, that God worked through Moses. So Moses gave them instructions, and they had to trust Moses' instructions. Understand this here. God does not give everyone the insight that he may give the leaders. There must be trust. You know, this is a common problem in leadership at times, especially in the church. It is. Many times people think they know more about how the direction of the church should go and how it should be. However, are not getting the insight that the Lord gave to the pastor. And so therefore, they cause confusion because they think they know everything. You know, look, I know many churches have voted the pastor in and uh, that's going to be put in place. But ultimately, it is God who places the pastor there at the church, voted in or not. And they are the one who God uses and who are responsible for and who will be held accountable that everything is going the way it should go. But let me move on. So look here. Moses gave the instructions and the instructions were important to follow because it set order. 
Moses was not going to be with them for a bit, and he did not know how long. However, Moses wanted to be sure that order was set. How many of us know that order is important? So Moses communicated to set order and to eliminate confusion. You see, following instructions eliminates confusion. You know, there is confusion in this world as we all see and witness because the instructions, the Bible here, is not being followed. So there's confusion in marriage, there's confusion in the family, there's confusion in order, there's confusion in right and wrong, there's confusion in morality, there's confusion in leadership, there's confusion amongst the nations, there's confusion in this world. All because the instructions that God has for us right here are not being followed. You know, in 2 uh, Kings 22, there's a king named Josiah. And Josiah sent his secretary to the, the, to the temple uh, to, to collect some of the offerings that the people had left behind. And while, uh, while this uh, secretary was there, he came, a priest gave him the law and said, I found this. And so the secretary gave Josiah the law and Josiah started to read it. And Josiah tore off his clothes and he was upset because he understood something. He said, wait, I now I understand why these people are not doing what God wants them to do. And why all this confusion is, is because they weren't reading the instructions. You see, instructions are so important to keep us where God wants us to be. So look at, look at verse 15 and 16. It says, Then Moses went up the mountain, and the, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. God called Moses. Moses went, and then Moses had to wait. God said in verse 12, he says, come up to me on the mountain and wait there. Now, the King James Version said, be there, which meaning wait. God told Moses what he was going up there for, for the law and the commandments. But then he told Moses to be there, wait there. And Moses was there, was there for six days. And, and on the seventh day, God had invited him to come in. But Moses didn't know how long he was going to have to wait. Now, the scripture does not state why God had Moses wait. But we all know that God knows exactly what he was doing. And here, Moses faithfully waited because, and because he faithfully waited, he was there when God told him to come in. How many times have we left? Because we could not wait and we missed the invitation to come in. We missed the invitation to move up. We missed the invitation to move forward. We missed the invitation to get out. We missed the invitation of a good man or a good woman. We missed the invitation all because we were impatient and we could not wait. Lamentations 3 and 5 says this. It says, The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. And yes, sometimes waiting is a tough thing. I, I know it is. And sometimes we are waiting in not so good conditions. We all have been through that. But you know, Psalms 27 and 14 says this. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord, you know, and while we're waiting, we need to have that attitude and saying, just like they're saying, God, I am willing to wait for you because I know that when it's my time, you will have what's best for me. And while I'm waiting, God, I know it is you who will hold me and who will sustain me. So God, you know what? I don't have a problem waiting. And you know what, God? I ought to be thankful to be waiting because if you have me waiting, then I know something is going to come my way. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's look at verse 17 and 18. It says, Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. And verse 18 says, Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain and was there for 40 days and 40 nights. God called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the scripture states that the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire. So this wasn't a comfortable sight. When you see it, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, like I really, it was kind of like a little scary in a sense. But God called Moses into it. You see, many times we don't follow the instructions of God because we think that where God is taking us is too hard. We think that where God is taking us is too rough. And the other way seems, appears to be easier. And the other way uh, doesn't look like it has so many other bumps. So we're, we're struggling because we know where God wants us to go, but the other way seems so much easier. But isn't that what the enemy wants you to think? Isn't that what the enemy wants you, wants it to appear? That the other way is easier? That the other way is greener? 
And how many times are we going to get fooled by this? God will never steer us wrong. And if, watch this, and if God called you into a storm, you better believe that he is in the storm and he has equipped you to deal with the storm. You see, we must have faith in God's instructions. Moses did. Look here, when Moses went in, Moses didn't ask any questions about any food or any water. He didn't bring any of that. He just knew that God would provide. Watch this, he knew that if God had him there, he would provide. He knew that if God took him somewhere else, he would provide. He knew that if God moved him here, he will provide. And the same thing with us, we have to, we have to believe in God's instruction. We have to follow God's instruction. If God moves you to the right, he'll provide you to the right. If God moves you to the left, he'll provide you to the left. If God moves you up, he'll provide you when you're up. If God moves you down, he'll provide you when you're down. But God, come on somebody, I'm going to follow your instructions. I'm coming home. But if instructions would not have been followed, then Moses would not have been in a place to be able to receive. And it would have been a domino effect. Why? Because he went to go receive the law and the commandments. And if he wasn't there, he wouldn't have been able to get them. He wouldn't have been able to take them down to the Israelites. And it would have caused some other effects with some other people. The same thing with us. When we don't follow the word of God and we don't follow instructions that God gives us, a domino effect can occur because number one, we're not in position to be able to receive where God wants us to be. And when we're not there, we may not be receiving something that, that can affect our family and it can cause a domino effect or those who are close to us. You see, if we do not follow the instructions, we will not be in a place to receive what God has for us. You know, if I go back to these instructions, uh, before I put that TV up, I'm going to read the instructions. I really am. And I'm going to make sure I follow these instructions. You know why? Uh, because I want that to look the way it's supposed to look. I want it to hang, my TV to hang the way it's supposed to hang. I want it to work the way it's supposed to work. I want it to last the way it's supposed to last. And I know if I read the instructions, uh, then that's what's going to happen. You know what? I'm going to follow the Word of God. Because the reason why I'm going to follow the Word of God is because I want to be where I'm supposed to be. I want to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I want to be in line where I'm supposed to be in line. So when God comes and opens the door, I am ready to be able to receive and I'm ready to enter where God wants me to be. And I, I challenge you today, follow the instructions of God. Yes, sometimes it may seem hard, but you know what? God is with you and we have to have faith in God. He'll never, he never left us nor forsake us and he still never will. Have faith, trust God, and lean not on your own understanding, and follow the instructions. God bless you. Hey Amen. Maybe you're tuning in with us today and you've never given your life to Christ, never said the sinner's prayer, never accepted him in your heart. Uh, and every second that you live and you have not done that, uh, you're, you're putting your life at risk. There's only one way to get to God, and that is through Jesus. And all you have to do is admit that you have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and confess him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God has given you this free gift that you don't have to do nothing for. And all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ into your heart and you too can be saved. And if you would like to do that today, uh, why don't you just repeat after me? Lord. I admit that I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Lord, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I'm confessing him as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right now. Come into my heart, come into my mind, and take over according to your will. Amen. God bless you. If you said that, you are now saved. Welcome to the kingdom of God. We would now like to encourage our members of Mount Calvary to send in their tithes and offerings. And if you would like to support us in giving, please go to our website at www.mcbcmh.org and click the donate tab. You will also find on our website our weekly schedule. We would also like to hear from you. Maybe you're interested in membership or just a prayer request. You can email us at mountcalvarymh at yahoo.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our website. We hope you have been blessed. God bless you.